Hello everyone, I'm Burning Heart Brony, and this is a basic intro to Manga Studio 5. Manga is a Japanese term for a comic book or graphic novel. Manga Studio 5 allows you to make your own. Two peripherals that I recommend having, one is crucial, is going to be your drawing tablet and an optional gaming pad. Let's jump right in. To make a new file, go to the file menu at top, click that, and click new or hit control N. Uh, we're just going to be concerned with basic illustrations, so click the uh, first button for illustration, uh, for file name, uh, name it whatever you want, and under the canvas size, uh, click this drop down menu under custom and click A4, and leave resolution at 300. Hit OK, and it creates a new canvas for you. If you're using a keyboard or a gamepad, it's very important to work with preset tools. Uh, setting keybinds so that they're easier and quicker to access. To set those, go to File Menu and go to Shortcut Settings, and there'll be a drop down menu of the different categories of buttons that you can uh, shortcut. Let's go to Tool, and on the right side you'll see the keybinds, and the left side you'll see the tools. Now, I have pen and pencil bound to the same key. That means every time I press it, it's going to toggle between those two tools. You can set up to three. Uh, in order to set those, highlight it and click Edit Shortcut or double tap the keybind. And when the white box pops up, that means it's ready to record. Push the key on your keypad or your keyboard and it is set. Hit OK and it saves it. The layer window. This is where all the elements you draw are separated. Keeping ink, sketch, and coloring on their own layers allows you to make adjustments to one, leaving the others intact. To create a new layer, simply click this icon, New Raster Layer, and it will bring up a new layer. You can also go to the Layer menu and click New Raster Layer. It will do the same thing. To delete a layer, simply click it and then click the trash can icon on the bottom right corner of the layer window and it will prompt you if you want to proceed. Hit Delete and it gets rid of it. To move a layer, simply click it and drag to its destination and then release. If you want to restore the factory settings on any tool that you use, uh, it's easy to reset. In the tool property window, on the bottom right corner is a little wrench set. Click that. It pops up a sub-tool detail window. On the bottom left corner, there's a button called Reset All Settings to Default. If you click that, it'll ask if you want to do that. Hit OK, and it resets everything back to factory. One of the most important features of Manga Studio is your ability to save. If it's been five or ten minutes before you have saved your progress, make sure that you save your work. Go to File, in the menu and click Save or Control S. Save As allows you to change the file type and the name if you have already saved. Tablet versus a mouse. You're going to see side by side uh, the reason why it's way more important to draw the tablet as opposed to a mouse. On the left side I'm going to draw a few strokes. And that's with the pen. Uh, right next to it I'm going to draw with the mouse. And you can see the quality difference. The mouse lines look really shaky, edgy, there's no stabilization or pressure control. So even though it's possible to color and draw with the mouse, I would not suggest it. Uh, stick with your tablet. When you first purchase Manga Studio 5, you'll probably see that the UI is screaming bright. To change that, go to the File menu, go to Preferences, and on the left menu, click Interface, and in color you'll see a drop-down menu and a slider. Uh, the light color is typically what it comes stock with, uh, and the intensity slider changes its gradient. So I recommend starting with the dark color and adjust it in there to your preference. That way, after long periods of drawing, it will definitely save your eyes. Your user interface has a multitude of windows. That's everything that you see on the screen here. It allows you to inter uh, interact with uh, your canvas and your picture and what you draw. Uh, to enable and disable windows, go to your window menu up top. Anything that is checked is going to be shown. Anything that's not checked will be hidden. So to show an example, I'm going to check history to show that. And it pops up the window. If you're drawing and you accidentally click uh, the window closed, don't worry. You can always go back to the window menu and recheck it, and it pulls it back up. The hand tool allows you to move the canvas around. To enable that, you can have any tool selected. Hold spacebar, and then your icon turns into a little hand. 
Click anywhere on the canvas and move around. It will move your canvas. To achieve the same thing, go to your navigator window and click anywhere in this red box and move it around and it will do the same thing. The zoom and move tools on your toolbar allow you to zoom in and rotate your canvas. If you click the zoom tool, anywhere you click on the canvas, it will zoom in. To zoom out, hold Alt and click the canvas and it will zoom back. Uh, the move tool, when you select that, click anywhere on the canvas and it allows you to rotate your canvas. Now in the navigator window you have similar tools. You have a slider for zoom. Below that is a slider for rotate. And you have manual buttons for zooming in and out and rotating your canvas. If you want to reset your canvas to vertical position, click the reset rotate button in your navigator window. The select tool allows me to manipulate specific anchor points on an object. So as an example, let's select the text bubble. I'm going to drag and drop on the canvas and it's going to create a circle. I'm going to click the select tool and click anywhere on the border and it's going to highlight all the independent anchor points that I can change. Simply click and drag each box and it allows me to manipulate the shape of my chat bubble. My select tool also allows me to move specific elements without actually selecting the layer. Simply mouse or pen over the layer that you want to move, click and drag. The move layer tool allows me to move any specific layer that I have selected in my layer window. Simply click the move layer button and select a layer that you want to move. Let's do the ink and I click the canvas anywhere and I drag. And as you can see, it moves that layer. Now note that I can't click anywhere and move that specific layer like I could with the select tool. I have to uh, select that specific layer if I want to move it. But I can click anywhere on the canvas to move it. You can also use your keypad on your keyboard in order to make finite adjustments to the movement of that layer. The marquee tool in the toolbar window allows me to manipulate pixels on a specific layer within the window that I select. There's a square marquee, an ellipse marquee, a lasso marquee is like a freehand select, just end where you start, and a polyline marquee allows me to, every time I click the canvas, it creates a new line, end where I start, and it creates a new selection shape. To deselect, I have to have either the rectangle or ellipse marquee selected and click anywhere outside of that shape, and it deselects, or I can go to the selection menu and manually select deselect. Using the rectangle marquee as an example, I'm going to select the color layer in my picture and I'm going to drag a box over her face. Now this means I can only work in the area that is within the box. The little marching ants means that that area is selected. So if I take my pen tool and I start drawing, you can see it does not leave the perimeter of the box that I have drawn. If I want to work outside of the selection area that I have made, I can invert the selection. You can do that in the selection menu. Click Invert Selected Area. Now it's going to select everything outside of that, which means that every time I draw, it's going to affect everything on the outside of the perimeter that I have drawn. The Selection Marquee tool has a few options. If I create a box and I have the first option selected, Create New, every time that I make a selection, it's going to be a new selection every time. If I have the select additionally checked, any box that I add to the one that I have made will stack and it will add the selection space. Using the pen tool I can draw within this field and you can see that it's all in one selection. The deselect partially, any selection that I make, I can take away from it. And the select already selected part means that any selection that I make and overlaps, that overlapping part will be the new selected area. The magic wand tool allows me to select a color range within a selected layer. So we're going to choose the color layer. I'm going to click on her skin tone. And as you can see, it selects everything of that color range. Now, just like the select marquee tool, we have a select new which means every time I click a new color range, it deselects the previous and selects the new. Uh, the select additionally means that any time I click, it will add to that same selection. And likewise, the deselect partially allows me to take it away. 
The eyedropper tool allows me to record any color that's on the canvas. So if I select the eyedropper tool, I'll click anywhere, and it records it on the color wheel and in the color history. And the color wheel is temporary, because anytime I choose a new color, it disappears. But in the color history, it records it for future use. To make a color palette for ease of painting and for speed, uh, create a new layer in your project, new raster layer, have it selected, and with your eyedropper tool selected, you can either choose the colors that already exist on the canvas or create your own on the color wheel. And when you choose the color, use your pen tool and start drawing little smudges. Now in doing this, you are creating a palette that you can refer to for your base colors, shades, and highlights. That way, instead of finding it manually on the color wheel every time, you can just refer to your palette with your eyedropper tool, and it allows you to select at any time. If you want it to disappear, simply click the eye on the layer uh, that you want to make disappear. In this case, it's the palette, and it will hide your palette. The pen and pencil tool are going to be the two most toggled tools in Manga Studio. The pen is most commonly used for inking, and the pencil is most commonly used for doing rough sketches. It's important if you want to make any adjustments to the two, uh, do inking on one layer and the sketching on a separate layer. To adjust the features of each tool, select the pen or pencil tool and go to your tool property window. There you have a slider for brush size, opacity for the transparency of your strokes, anti-aliasing adjusts the sharpness of the line, and stabilization rounds out the line for you.